Hi, I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today I'm talking to Julia Bryan, who's a last landscape designer and an artist, and along with her husband, um, Duncan Bryan, the principal of Garden Large, which is a pretty fabulous business that you're doing. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Garden Large. What does that name, name mean? Do you, do you just do enormous gardens? No, or? not. It's more an attitude. Uh -huh. It's more think big, think about your whole property. Just don't don't just think about one little corner or one little piece. Even a small property, you can think about the whole thing first before you do anything. Um, and it's also just a kind of a feeling of exuberance, I think. Yeah, yeah. Think yeah. big. Yeah, think big. Yeah, how'd you get started in garden design? Many years ago, um, I had a ground floor apartment in Brooklyn, New York, and I grew tomatoes and things. And then I met Duncan, and he spent one summer turning this little backyard into a ravishing garden that we called Red Gardens. And some friends said, oh, could you do this for me? And Duncan said, okay. And that was that. Was that. that was it, huh? Yep. Yeah. So what kind of a background did you bring to gardening? Well, I come with a, with a fine art and graphic design background, and Duncan brings a theater and film background. And, um, and it, all, it all flows really nicely into landscape design. Yeah, yeah. So you have a garden at your house, at your property, that you've been working on since... Since 1990. Since 1990, mm -hmm. developing it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a pretty spectacular garden. And it's not what, not what I would expect when I think I'm going to visit a garden. I expect things to be manicured. And, and, um, but yours is a whole different story. Well, we have a philosophy of naturalistic gardening um, where it is a more relaxed approach. You're taking your region into, into consideration, the look of your region, the kind of plants that are appropriate to where you are. So we're not just imposing a rubber stamp kind of a design on, on the property. It flows, one area flows to another. Um, and we're thinking about textures and colors and and shapes and the scale of things and, and a variety of ways to make it interesting. Yeah, and, you, and don't you, you, you kind of throw in something spectacular, you know, like it, it might be a spectacular fall color or, or just, you know, a, a very large plant. We like to have, there's, always, there's a sense of surprise sometimes where you, or drama, you come around a corner on this winding path and, and there's a really cool plant or, or something very su a surprisingly large tree or something with big leaves next to something with really small leaves. And it's not just a flower garden. I think some people are expecting, you know, rows of perennials and, right. and that's not what we do. Everything is, everything is connected and flowing in one thing into another. We don't edge the beds. Um, do, you, do you find that, that um, uh, people must come to you specifically for that, but do people uh, uh, you know, ever say, you know, like, I really want some tulips in here? Or, oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we won't say no unless we really know it's a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, we tr you know, sometimes people want things that aren't going to work. They want a certain tree and we know it's not going to grow. Yeah. Um, but you know, in our in our work for clients, you know, we're trying to make the client happy. We want to help them f have what they want, but also to guide them yeah. so that they don't they don't end up with something that they said they wanted, but it's you know is inappropriate or doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, um, and you do you do in the gardens a lot of work with gravel paths to mm -hmm. bring people to different vistas of your garden? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For us, the gravel works very well as 
as a mulch and a path surface. Um, it lasts a long time. It, um, and we've cut down on the amount of mowing. We have very little lawn. We have hardly any lawn, really. Yeah. Um, because, because of the paths. And the paths also flow into the beds a lot of times. That's what I meant when I said we don't edge. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. The bed just kind of flows in and the gravel flows under the plants. Mm -hmm. And it makes for a much more relaxed look. Yeah, and it, it makes for a, um, it, it, it feels good to be in your garden. Thank you. It's a very good, yeah. Um, so when you say a whole property garden, is, is there, like, if somebody wanted to think about how to begin that process with their own garden? And, um, you know, I, I know I, I have some plants around my house and I have a mm -hmm. garden here and then I have mm -hmm. a bush over there. Mm -hmm. How do you start bringing that sort of thing together? Well, we encourage people to, to start by thinking about the whole place. Usually, very often people think, are already fixed on an idea, okay, I want a flower bed here. Yeah. And they're not thinking about how is that going to connect to some other part of their property. Maybe they have a driveway that comes in like this and an entry to their house that goes like that. And um, we, start, we often start with structuring elements. So you think of how if you put a shrub there, maybe you want another shrub over here mm -hmm. and then one over there. Um, j just trying to get beyond just thinking narrowly yeah. about one little area. And even if you end up only doing that one little area, thinking about how maybe over time or um, at some point how it, how it all connects. How, you know, how yeah. does it look out the window? You know, what is your pro do you have a problem with blocking the view of a neighbor? Mm -hmm. um, we just try to think about the whole thing first before, yeah. before getting all committed to one idea. Right, right. And you work a lot with native plants? Yes, we love native plants. Yes, we do. And uh, we try to use them as much as possible. They used to be very hard to find, and now they're much more accessible yeah. in the trade. Yeah. So, and they're so important for, for encouraging pollinators and all the creatures that help make our planet stick together. Work better. Work better. Yeah. <laughs> what about deer? Uh, What's, deer? How bad is that problem? Deer for us, of course we have deer and yeah. they and they march right through and it's taken time to figure out how to deal with them by partly by only planting certain things but also for instance there is an area where we planted a lot of small viburnums and for years, we had to protect them. Yeah. But then finally, they got big enough so that even if the deer walk through, they can't just um, eat them to the ground. Right, right. Um, some parts of the area have much worse deer. You know, the Westchester and parts of Connecticut have much worse oh, deer really? problems. Believe it or not, th because they don't have hunting. Yeah. And um, so it's more difficult for people down down south to <laughs> down uh, county. Yeah, down county. Yeah. Yeah. How about you mentioned pollinators? How important is that to have plants that pollinators will be attracted to? Well, overall, it's really important. Um, you know, you you don't have to have every single thing be a native plant, but we try to encourage people to um, have more more native plants. Yeah. Um, don't don't exclude them. Part of it is getting people to look at native plants in a new way because mm -hmm. I think in the past they were taken for granted. Yeah. You know, they just kind of come up and you think, oh, that, you know, that's an astro. Let's yeah, let's pull it out. Yeah. Um, where would you? Where could people find out more about that? Um, well, I'm, I'm sure they could go online, but there, are there specific resources that you would recommend? We have a favorite author, Doug Talame, who has written um, 
bringing nature home. And I think now there's a new edition of that. He's an entomologist who has written very clearly and persuasively about the importance of native plants. And he goes around giving talks about the topic, and he's very charming, and yeah. and and um, that's our favorite book to recommend to people. Okay, that would be, that would be great to know about that. What's the name of the author again? Doug Talamay. Talamay. T a l l a m y. Now your garden, um, that on on your property, the Brian Garden, is um, an attractive garden for photographers and painters, mm -hmm. and and. Um, I know every year you do the um, Garden Conservancy Open Garden Days, and how does mm -hmm. that, how do you get on that list of gardens that, that uh, are part of that? Well, we approached them years ago. Um, I think, you know, they're very amenable. You, know, you do have to show, for starters, through photographs that there's something to see. and. Um, and they were interested and sent someone to look and said, oh, great. And it also helps if there are other gardens in your neck of the woods. Yeah. So they try to pair gardens by region so that they can have a day with more than one garden, more or less in the same area. Yeah, that so makes that sense. Helps. Um, but it's a wonderful organization. Yeah. And when is that? Is it in October every year? We do it in October. We just had our open day last weekend and it was mm -hmm. even though it was a rainy day in the morning we ended up with a pretty good crowd yeah well it got better in the afternoon it yeah got it nice cleared out. Up a little bit. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so I, I know I went one time for um, the open garden days and it seemed like there was so many people there <laughs> you had quite a crowd yeah we get we get a big crowd yeah so if a person wanted to visit the garden, that would be the opportune time for them to do it? That would be the time. Yeah. Sometimes we have garden clubs mm -hmm. come to visit, but that's the time that we always are, are available, you know, are open. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I know that you have, your, your garden has been featured in books mm -hmm. and um, attracted um, top-notch photographers. So how does how was that experience when you have somebody coming in to, to photograph the garden? Um, it's exciting, but it also makes us a little nervous. We need to clean up and get yeah. we feel you know we have to really make it look good. And but it's very exciting, and it's so much fun to share the garden with people. And it's, you know, on the occasion of a book. Well, you know that's super exciting. Yeah. Um, and we love showing it off, which is another reason we love the open day because it's one day a year that we really get to just show it off and. Right, and and people are garden aficionados. Yes. Yeah, they they get it. That's right. Yeah, they know what's going on exactly. there. Exactly, and that, yeah. that's always fun. Yeah. Okay, Julia. That, that's all the time we have today. Okay. So thank you for coming and telling us about uh, Garden Large and the Brine Garden. Thank you. Yeah.